Okay, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us for this interview. Um, uh, my name is Reza Rad from Adekad and here's RK from Microsoft Product Team. Hello, RK. Hello, uh, Reza. Thank you for having me today. Nice to meet you. Thank nice you. To meet uh, you. Can you introduce yourself, um, what you are doing in Microsoft? Tell us more about yourself. Absolutely. Um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Radha Krishnan and I also go by a short name, uh, RK. Um, I work predominantly on the admin portal, uh, like starting from tenant setting, capacity setting, um, workspace management, everything that you see within admin portal. And in addition to that, I also own the developer experience uh, for Fabric admins, uh, mainly the admin APIs and any customization that comes with uh, API uh, related work. Right, great. Uh, so very good to be with you here. Okay. So, so is that also including um, like areas such as domain configuration, subdomain configuration or not? Of course, right. So we own the, the more, uh, the, the everything that is a developer experience. There are different teams that works um, with the domains. Uh, but I also have my say uh, in terms of like, say, how do we uh, use admin APIs to configure uh, domains, subdomains, and all those things. Right. Um, but uh, to be very precise, we have another PM. Uh, her name is uh, Nama, and uh, she works with Adi, uh, who is from ILDC. Yeah. Correct. Right. Cool. So, um, so one thing about like this admin portal, like we go and we see these tenant settings with a massive list of all these like features and like is there um, I mean it is kind of categorized at the moment yeah. but is there a plan to make it uh, a bit easier to to find some of the things or I don't know uh, some way that it would be better grouped together something like that uh, that's a very good question we have heard from customers like say having um, some difficulty related to navigation right mm. um, so uh, to start with, uh, there, are, there, are there are two things that we did in the recent um, past, right? One, right. being able to find any setting that's new to the admin portal. That's right. one, okay. right? Yep. And another one is like, say, there is this long list of settings and mm -hmm. there are um, some uh, setting that I remember by the title name or some words within the title. Mm -hmm. There are certain uh, uh, settings that I remember by something in the description. Um, so there is no way that I, and, and then like say, it's, sometimes people like say, do a control F on the browser and mm -hmm. then try to find out. But if, if the setting is not expanded, yeah, it, it doesn't um, find things within the description. Correct. Right? So yes. these are the, uh, the popular concerns we uh, heard. So first thing, what we did is we introduced something called as visual cues. Right. Whenever there is a new tenant setting that is introduced, um, user when they come into the admin portal, they see a list of all the new tenant settings at the uh, top of this tenant setting page. Right. Yeah. And um, they can click one of those uh, in the list and directly go to that new tenant setting wherever it is in the list. In addition to that, we also put a new icon right next to the tenant setting. The general configuration is that it would stay there for 30 days from the day of introduction of that uh, tenant setting. Right. So okay. uh, the first and foremost, like say, hey, I, I don't have visibility into what is new that came into this thing. Uh, so there are good chances that when you come into the tenant setting, now you get that uh, list at the top and then you bump into it. And then in addition to that, what we int uh, did is like say, we uh, introduced a little search box. So when you put in that, a, a keyword, right, yeah. now it actually like say, find through the setting, uh, the keyboard could be in the setting title or in the description and you think yeah that works really good uh, yeah, exactly right i've heard yeah. uh, it's a it's a very simple thing right but yeah, uh, very simple and, thing and, but um, very useful it's very surprising yeah, because that i've been we, searching for like the copilot settings uh, uh, and the copilot is not the name of it open ai is but if you search copilot it brings both of these because one of them exactly. has it in a description so, exactly right so, yeah very helpful I, I saw that video of yours and then yeah. i shared it in our <laughs> internal channel hey guys see that your work is actually being you put Searches, to use right using, yeah. it's a, such a simple thing and um, uh, i mean uh, it's surprising that we missed it um, so long but we introduced that a good thing that is good. Um, in addition to that uh Yes, the uh, the organization is something that we are looking at it, mm. but there is n not a um, a solid plan. But uh, as we um, 
you guys know that we actively listen to our customer through ideas portal through uh, folks like you mvp channels and all those right. things or any other icms so this is one of the things that's shaping up mm -hmm. uh, but i don't have more details uh, to share uh, on that front correct uh, but organization is something that right. um, it's a good thing to look right. at that okay. is cool um, in terms of like, so we have that tenant settings, usually it's like administrator level, yeah. fabric admin or power BI admin level, you might call it. But then um, we have domains and yeah. subdomains now yeah. and workspaces. Uh, so with these, um, there aren't really much admin control around it. Mm -hmm. Like in domain, I think we can do like certification or things like that. But yeah. are any of those yeah. admin tenant settings are coming this way, for example, I don't know. Um, like publish to web, I might want um, this workspace content to be able to publish to web, but mm -hmm. not other workspaces. So yeah. things like that, um, controlling at the workspace level, at the domain level and subdomain level, those kind of things. Yeah. Is it in the plan, future plan? Uh, that's a great question again, all right? Like say the whole point of like say having um, a domain and subdomain is that uh, being mm -hmm. able to like say organize um, uh, groups into uh, logical uh, business domains and then have those domain admins uh, have some control how they want to run their data projects, right? right so which correct. means that they need some control uh, that they can actually do at the domain level, right? So um, what we have introduced during the public preview of Fabric is uh, mm -hmm. the delegate, ability to delegate tenant settings. Correct, right? yes. And uh, as, a, as a, like a kind of a, like a trial run, uh, we introduced um, a delegation to certification and then we, we right. have a full yes. list of uh, other settings that is lined up so that that could be actually okay so there will uh, be more coming uh, to the uh, domain um, the first list is like since this is something that's out there in the public uh, the, the next list that we are working on uh, is uh, uh, export uh, and sharing settings. All right, uh, right? yes, so yeah, that would the, be uh, really yeah. helpful. Uh, those things are going to come in uh, phases, um, uh, but they will come eventually one by one into domain. So the domain admins mm -hmm. have a uh, empowerment that was given uh, to them by the tenant admin, so they can actually manage the uh, domain uh, by themselves. Correct. Yes. Right. That's cool. That's that's good news. Um, you mentioned you are also dealing with admin APIs. Yes. So admin APIs like progressed a lot in the past few days. Uh, sorry, few few years. <laughs> like it was really basic. Now we can do a lot of things with that. Uh, but one of the limitations is still like I have to be admin to use. I mean, ad, it is admin mm -hmm. API, right? So I have to be admin anyway. Uh, but now considering uh, what we just talked about, like domain level, subdomain level, workspace admin level. So would you have like in the future again some admin APIs at R for those kind of level like as a, I don't know, domain admin, I would be able to use this API calls. That's a, a once again, thanks for that question. Um, we don't have a, a plan uh, today to mm. like say make other uh, um, admins um, to exercise uh, the admin API itself. But what we have done is actually, uh, we are quickly adding uh, SPN support for many of the admin APIs. Right. So, which means that as an organization, you can decide what is the SPN and then how you want to actually, mm -hmm. which are the SPNs that you want to uh, be able to use uh, those kind of an um, API so that um, some of this shortcoming is actually handled there. Right. So as a first stage is actually we are quickly adding um, SPN support. Uh, if you have seen the uh, documentation, uh, all the new APIs that we introduced as part mm -hmm. of the fabric, like say we are coming up with more generic APIs, like say get items, uh, get uh, item access details and all those kind of like new right. APIs. Yeah. And all those APIs are today coming with SPN support by default. Like um, And some of the even the um, API that is going to uh, make some edits back to the fabric, we are actually quickly adding SPN support uh, for them. Um, so uh, it's an evolving uh, space. Um, but uh, that's a good question uh, that okay, right. being other admins being able to do that. Yeah, uh, we'll look into that uh, actually. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. that that that's cool. And um, the um, oh, and the other thing is like with the API. So we have these APIs that we can call it using I don't know like a custom application, C sharp code or anything mm -hmm. like that. But 
But there are also some of these that we can use, um, like um, the PowerShell commandlets for this. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, and they are not exactly the same. Like we have less APIs supported in mm -hmm. the commandlets um, for PowerShell than, than the big list of APIs. Um, so usually like these are uh, a little bit behind because it takes more time to build those command let commands or something like that. It's not uh, like say uh, exactly taking time, uh, but then like we, we just looked at the, the, the usage pattern. Um, mm. uh, the, the, the command lets is where a uh, little bit less usage than actually like say uh, the, the, the API. Correct. But once again, uh, having said that, um, we have identified another class of um, users, right? Where uh, they are not as tech savvy as a, like a full blown developers like who can write C sharp code or who can use Postman and all those things. Right. But there is a class of users who are very comfortable using PowerShell and like, like the old school kind of uh, thing, right? Mm. So uh, that's another thing that we are we have like taking note of this. Like say um, we haven't yet been there, uh, but there should be an one to one mapping with the PowerShell command. Let uh, that's a that's an approach that that's quickly evolving into. Our, our development culture. Correct, right, um, yeah. Yeah, so something to stay tuned on that, yes. That is uh, right. But we are not actually, like, say, giving it up. Uh, in fact, like, say, uh, we, are, we are putting more attention towards mm. it. So. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that makes sense, yes. Yeah, exactly. Of course, yeah, priorities and things like that. Cool. Um, and one other thing, like, in the administration, like, in the admin portal, again, that's in tenant settings, um, do you see, and it might be something that you don't really have a plan for it, but do you see in the future that we would have things such as admins by the workloads. Let's say, for example, this is the data engineering admin in mm -hmm. my tenant. This is the, I don't know, data science admin of my tenant. This is the data warehouse admin of tenant. Like, is such thing... Um, yeah, um, again, uh, yeah. there are a few customers who talked about this granularity by role. That's what yeah. uh, we have uh, um, named it as. Uh, um, um, at the moment, the use case of like say uh, uh, like say dividing admin controls by user persona is not something that we are actually um, like actively uh, investing not an active on. Plan, uh, right? But yes. then, but then, like say as I said, like if we are hearing more and more customers coming and say because fabric it, it's kind of evolving, then people are like say figuring it out, like say how effectively they can actually manage uh, different Correct. workloads. Yes. Um, so these are uh, very evolving topics. Uh, uh, but yeah, um, I, I, I cannot say an yes or no answer at this point. Yeah. But we have heard a few times customers talking about and we are actively looking at customer feedback. So if it has to be done it that way, yeah, Correct. maybe not. Uh, why not in the future? Yeah, that's but, right. But that's not something that we are actively um, engaging on. At yeah, the yeah. Mainly sense. because that's not what the signal we are getting from the field. Correct, yeah. So, so if um, our audience want to um, give you feedback, what is the best place to, uh, or give their ideas, what is the best place? Is it ideas.powervia.com or other? Absolutely. Um, the ideas.fabric.com uh, is, yep. uh, is the main uh, source, uh, one of the main source. Uh, but uh, we are always open through other channels, like say our enterprise voice channel and then mm -hmm. our partner channels right. and MVP channels. Um, besides the uh, the the ideas uh, dot, um, fabric dot com, and also uh, anytime we receive any service requests or any um, right, yeah. yeah yeah any of those user services sometimes that pop up and people do have certain uh, way to actually type in their comments and so we actively look at all those signals uh, to get feedback uh, from customers right so Correct, yeah. Uh, but yeah i just uh, dot fabrics dot com is the most straightforward way to tell okay hey this is what uh, we want and then that's the community uh, where uh, other people also come in and then up out your uh, ideas so right, that yeah. kind of like say comes more glaring out our face okay hey this is something that uh, customers are that is uh, actively pursuing on uh, right. pursuing on uh, so um, absolutely uh, that's a great um, yeah that is right product, yeah. so so getting votes for your ideas is quite important uh, exactly. yeah it's just if you have an idea but no votes then probably it's not going to be a highest priority um, cool is there anything else that you would like to talk about that we haven't covered um, already 
Um, yeah, I mean, um, go try fabric, um, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so we truly believe that's one of the uh, uh, the significant improvement that we have done in the recent times in the data world uh, uh, from the Microsoft side. And then uh, our customers are, uh, whoever is actively using it, they are very happy. Um, so I invite everyone to go try fabric. There is a free trial um, that um, everybody right, can yeah. actually spin and try it, uh, try and then give uh, feedback in terms of, like, say, not only in terms of ad, uh, admin and governance, uh, but anything about products. Um, yeah, that that is cool. Um, how people get in touch with you, like LinkedIn, Twitter? What um, is the main channel? LinkedIn? Yeah, well, LinkedIn uh, or Case Srinivasan is the handle that you can actually uh, uh, search for. Srinivasan is my second right. name. Uh, if you want to spell it, it's R K and S R I N I V A S A N. That's uh, my LinkedIn. Cool. Um, yeah, um, I, I'm, I'm not a Twitter person. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's fair. Um, awesome. Yeah, and and my. Um, um, Microsoft ideas at robstrin at microsoft.com if in case somebody wants to reach out. Right, directly. okay, perfect. I will add those as a text under yeah, this sure. video. Um, so thank you again for attending. Thanks hey, for thank your you, time. Thank you, Visa, for taking time and uh, um, interviewing us on uh, all the latest development. Uh, and uh, thanks to all the viewers uh, thank and you. the was, fabric users. It was a pleasure to meet you. Thank and you. thank you all for attending. Until the next video, bye. Bye.